ChatGPT with Vision isn't even out yet for most people, and yet those who do have access to it are already showing some mind-blowing use cases. Today, we are looking at the fruits of one of the more exciting AI product announcements recently, which is, of course, ChatGPT with Vision. Today, we're going to go through eight different ways that people are already discovering how to use this new tool in hopes that they give you ideas for how you might use it when it becomes widely available. Now, one caveat, unfortunately, I myself have not had a chance to experiment with this yet. I, alas, have not been gifted this incredible tool. So this is all a curation from what other people have done. And because of that, and because access is limited right now, you will notice that some of the folks who are sharing the results are held across a number of these different categories. Let's start first and foremost with just the obvious and most basic use case of visual research. Rowan Chung showed an example of a photo looking out from the mouth of a cave on what looks like a lush tropical environment. He writes, where is this? ChatGPT responds, the image appears to be taken from inside a cave overlooking a coastline with a distinctly curving road. Based on the scenery and the characteristics of the landscape, it strongly resembles the view from Makaru Point on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. Now, I've seen other people post similar demonstrations where they give, for example, a photo of a landscape or a city and ask, where is this? I've seen other people experiment with just visual recognition tasks, asking what type of an animal is in a shot, for example. And so far, at least ChatGPT with Vision seems to perform that pretty well. Now, especially with the integration into the mobile app, I actually think that this is going to be a use case that people use a lot. It feels to me like a very standard part of travel in the future could be pointing your chat GPT app at something you're looking at and saying, what is that? Or tell me about that. But now let's move on to some slightly different use cases. One that's in the column of just creative, quirky, and fun is GBT4 Vision for interior design. Pietro Scarano, who you're going to hear about a lot in this video as he has done a ton of experiments, writes, I love how it's incorporating what it knows about me in the suggestion because of custom instructions. So basically, he has posted a picture of a room and says, how could I improve it? ChatGPT gives a number of suggestions to enhance the room, from color to lighting to plants to art. Now, in terms of custom instructions, that feature is the one in which you can give ChatGPT more information about yourself, so it has that as context when it answers future queries. And one of the places that that comes up here is in the art suggestion. ChatGPT writes, given your background in classical studies in art, perhaps adding some artwork on the walls could be a great personal touch. They could be prints of classical artworks or something contemporary to create a blend of old and new. Now, Pietro also shows off our third use case that people are experimenting with. And frankly, this is the one that if I had to pick what people are most excited about, it's this. That is the use case of building websites and coding. Pietro writes, from image to live website using GPT-4 Vision and Replit in less than a minute. Things are about to get so interesting. So basically, Pietro shares a video of him posting in an example UI in a photo and saying, replicate this exactly, don't skip anything, write the code, from which he's able to export it and get it in an IDE in an incredibly quick amount of time. McKay Wrigley did something similar. He writes, I gave ChatGPT a screenshot of a SaaS dashboard and it wrote the code for it. This is the future. Now, nearly 7 million people have watched this video to see how GPT with Vision moves from just a screenshot to an actual working prototype, but McKay wasn't done there. He also tweeted, you can give ChatGPT a picture of your team's whiteboarding session and have it write the code for you. This is absolutely insane. And sure enough, in that video, which has just under 10 million views, McKay shows an image of the whiteboard that's actually in his room, posts an image of it to GPT-4, and says, you are an expert software developer. This was my team's whiteboarding session for our onboarding flow. You need to write the code for this. Take a deep breath and think step by step about how you will do this. Now write the complete code for this working one step at a time. You'll notice that language that we talked about in an earlier episode this week of taking a deep breath and thinking step by step, which apparently increases the success of results dramatically. But let's take a step back here because all three of these examples are sort of similar and one of the most powerful uses of this new technology. When people talk about why AI, even though it will disrupt the jobs of today, will enable new jobs, I think you start to get a glimpse of that watching these types of demos. The reduction in the barrier between idea and execution is so monumental here that from a silly, hard to interpret image on a whiteboard, within minutes there can be working code is just unlike anything we've seen. It's hard for me to imagine that that doesn't increase the quantity of what we produce. Now, I could stop here, and I think ChatGPT Vision would still be exciting, but there are many, many other use cases that people are exploring, so we will move on. Fourth on our list, reading and explaining diagrams. 
Now, there are so many examples of this that are posted, but one of my favorite ones comes from John Stokes and Sean Spriggins. That is this unbelievably information-dense slide, apparently from the Pentagon, titled Integrated Defense Acquisition Technology and Logistics Lifecycle Management System. And for this to really get the full effect, if you're not watching the video, if you're listening to this as the podcast, I suggest you go check it out. There has to be 3,000 words on this page and hundreds of boxes all flowing between each other. And yet ChatGPT is able to make some sense of it. Now, one of the things that's interesting about being able to understand diagrams is that some diagrams are also entirely different types of information. For example, Marco Mascoro posted the electronic schematics of the Arduino design, and ChatGPT with Vision was able to understand that it was an electronic circuit and explain how the different components interconnected and worked. Now, another example of breaking down a diagram suggests a fifth use case, which is education. McKay once again writes, ChatGPT breaks down this diagram of a human cell for a ninth grader. McKay posts a picture of the type that you might see in any sort of standard science textbook, and ChatGPT gives a ton of additional information about what each of the different components are and what they do in the context of the cell. Now, what he also shows in this video is that it's not just the initial result, but that you can interact with ChatGPT to ask for further clarification. This sort of dialogue between machine and person is like a non-argumentative Socratic dialogue, but coming to AI. Now, the flip side, of course, is that education systems are going to have to have a real rethink when it comes to homework. Peter Yang posted a worksheet from mathaids.com with a bunch of addition problems into GPT Plus and says, give me the answers. ChatGPT says, certainly, let's solve these addition problems. Peter's comment sharing it to Twitter is, kids will never do homework again. I actually had a conversation today about the fact that if teachers can figure out exercises that are actually valuable for kids to do that aren't something that ChatGPT can do, it's likely to mean that that's a much more valuable use of those kids' time, frankly, when it comes to learning. Now, from here, we move into some higher order type of use cases. I'm calling use case number six higher order interpretation. And in some ways, it's a variation on the theme of explaining diagrams. But one of the examples, once again from Pietro, shows that there's a lot more than just image recognition going on here. The image that Pietro inputted to ChatGPT was a four-panel cartoon in which three people say, I'm glad we all agree, each thinking about a different shape. One thinking about a square, one thinking about a circle, one thinking about a triangle. The second panel appears to show the images revealed, at which point the three people realize that they actually didn't agree. A third panel seems to show a transmutive process where the shapes combine to become a different shape, to which all the participants say, aha. And a fourth panel repeats the message from the first, I'm glad we all agree, but with each of the participants actually thinking about the same shape. When Pietro asked, what do you think is the meaning of this image? ChatGPT responds, the image portrays the concept of group dynamics and perspectives. It's then able to articulate what happens in each of the panels and how they relate to one another, and comes to the conclusion that, quote, Overall, it seems to highlight the importance of communication, understanding, and alignment in group settings. It suggests that even if individuals think they are aligned, without clear communication, misunderstandings can occur. But with effort and discussion, a shared understanding can be achieved. But what's so different about this example in particular is just how much interpretation and understanding of group dynamics and things like that go into this. It's not just an electronic circuit which can be recalled as complex as it might be. This really does feel like it requires higher order thinking and is in that way a pretty fundamentally different use case than what we've seen before. Somewhat related to that higher order thinking, one more from Pietro. He writes, using GPT-4 vision to name never before seen architectural styles created with Midjourney. It excels at identifying diverse elements and assigning names to these distinctive creations. So I'm calling this seventh category of use cases creative expression. The images that Pietro shares are a little hard to see, but they look like they have big marble stone, sumptuous classic bedroom furniture, but combined with interesting modern touches and lights. ChatGPT says, Observing the blend of traditional Greco-Roman motifs and elements with sleek modern lines, innovative lighting, and contemporary furnishings, I would suggest the name Athenian Modernism. Then goes on to explain why it wants that name, but I think it's pretty perfect. And once again feels a bit higher order than just interpreting what's in a photo from the real world. And this gets us to our eighth and final use case, easily the most important. Once again, we turn to Peter Yang, who has presented ChatGPT with vision an image of the most confusing set of street parking rules that you have ever seen. No parking 11 to 1 Tuesday street cleaning, tow away school days, no stopping Monday to Friday, school day exceptions, tow away school days. This is six feet tall, at least, of parking rules. Peter posts the image in and says, it's Wednesday at 4 p.m. Can I park at this spot right now? Tell me in one line. ChatGPT says, yes, you can park for up to one hour starting at 4 p.m. Peter writes, I will never get a parking ticket again. 
Now, the question comes up, of course, are there things that ChatGPT with Vision can't do? Are there any areas where people have been disappointed? I'm sure that we're going to get a lot more of that once more people have their hands on it. But for some initial thoughts, we turn to a blog post from RoboFlow from James Gallagher and Piotr Skalski all about their first impressions with GPT-4 Vision. On some tests, it did well, including visual question answering and object detection, but it wasn't perfect in optical character recognition. They posted a slightly blurry image of a tire and said, read the serial number, return only number, no additional text. They say GPT-4V was unable to correctly identify the serial number in an image of a tire. Some numbers were correct, but there were several errors in the result from the model. When it came to CAPTCHAs, they write, we found that GPT-4V was able to identify that an image contained a CAPTCHA but often failed the test. In a traffic light example, GPT-4V missed some boxes that contained traffic lights. There were also some mistakes on crosswords. They write, the model appeared to read the clues correctly but misinterpreted the structure of the board. As a result, the provided answers were incorrect. The same limitation, they say, was exhibited in their Sudoku test. Now, these may seem like minor quibbles with such an impressive piece of technology, and they are. I present them only just to try to give a more robust picture and reminder of the fact that as incredible as this is, it isn't perfect and there are still advances to be made. But overall, it is a fairly huge update, and it makes sense why many people inside OpenAI think that this is the biggest product launch in some ways that they've had since ChatGPT came out in the first place. Anyways, guys, hope you are as excited as I am about getting your hands on GPT with Vision. I know I will be eagerly refreshing until the day it actually shows up. Appreciate you listening as always. And until next time, peace.